getting a new ultrasound machine. It was a new kind of uh, ultrasound probe um, that uh, we wanted to try, which actually has a better ability to look at lymph nodes in the neck and see if they look suspicious for cancer or not. We have our ultrasound here and then we were right here around 4 p.m. We just thought we'll check it out on our own necks and so a couple of my other colleagues did that um, and then I just checked it out on my own neck. It looked irregular, dark with like white spots which we call calcifications and uh, found some uh, uh, bad looking lymph nodes on the left side. I see that and then I kind of look at my colleagues also and kind of the expression on their faces like well this does not this looks like some suspicious cancerous lymph node and then the second thing is like oh maybe it's just thick muscle and this is not a lymph node which is not the first, I would never think that when I would do that on a patient right like we know what to look for and you have your number one diagnosis and that's usually what it comes out to be and then my you know my partners convinced me like no this looks suspicious but yeah I think the first step was kind of denial like you know this is probably something else, just a muscle that's thickened or something like that. The same day, my, uh, my uh, colleague, Dr. Whitney Goldner, uh, did a biopsy and um, I had a diagnosis within like early next week. When I have patients and we are either conveying them the news in person or on the phone immediately when it comes uh, that, you know, most patients with thyroid cancer do very well. And we, I say it and I, you know, I, I mean it because that's what the data shows, but when I was saying it over and over in my head for myself, I'm like, yeah, most, but some may not do well, right? What if I fall in that some category? Half of my time is in clinical care for patients and some teaching, and half of my time is in um, doing research on thyroid cancer. You know, either patients will ask me, they'll see the next car, even if I don't tell them, they'll ask me. Um, or there have been other times where I've kind of told them the information, especially if I'm trying to kind of convey to someone, you know, what they will likely go through. or you know, kind of uh, allay some of their fears. Um, I had an instance where I was getting radioactive iodine and I was talking to a patient of mine. Patient and their family, we were discussing the diet we we're supposed to do, the, you know, recipes that need to be followed and, you know, how tough that can be, even if we don't realize. And I was like, yeah, I would not have realized that. Even with all, you know, the training and everything, if you don't go through it, you, you probably won't realize all of it. It was like a bizarre kind of fortuitous turn of events. I was at the right place at the right time where I was lucky enough to be doing these ultrasounds. Otherwise, you know, yeah, I didn't feel any symptoms. Um, that lymph node would have had to grow much larger, maybe spread more before I would have found out. Being anywhere else, it's tough to get all these groups together because a lot of places will have it like you have a primary care or endocrinologist and then you consult with someone in radiology and you send them to a surgeon somewhere else. Like I had everyone like the surgeon, pathologist and radiologist here down the hall. That kind of removed a lot of anxiety uh, from my mind um, and I knew these people worked very well together to get the best outcomes for patients. So it was a very easy journey for me. I have talked to some other people like everybody's kind of amazed even like you know kind of gurus in the field are amazed at the the way that it's kind of like I call it like the aligning of my clinical research and now personal trajectories. I'm using it in all the most uh, positive manner so that not only to help myself but also the patients.